Okay, so for anyone who knows me slightly, I make history games for a living, and so I like games and I like history. So how about we talk about the history of a game, or maybe like a, an historically relevant game? And of course, I want to talk about Doom. Who here has heard about Doom? Okay, some people have not. Who has played Doom? Who has played Doom in the 90s? Okay, oh, we're, we're getting younger and younger. That's cool. So, uh, for the for the few people uh, who are not like a boomer like me, uh, this is the grandfather of all like FPSs. We used to call them Doom-like actually back in the days because everything was like a Doom thing. It was really in 1993. It's 3D-ish. Like some people call it 2.5D. I'm not gonna bore you with the details. Uh, interestingly, made by three programmers and um, maybe like six people in total in one and a half year. Like game development time were amazing back then. Uh, it, it has gathered an interesting cult following over the years, especially since like about 10 years ago. Oh, just, if you've never seen Doom in your life, this is what it looks like. Look at this. Peak 1993 uh, game. I, 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 I fought my father to be able to have a computer to play it back and Amazing. Anyhow, so... Um, like about 10 years ago, somebody made like a, a funny bet about playing Doom like on, a, on, on some weird device. I think it was like an oscilloscope. And he started the whole concept of like, can it run Doom now? And there's a full subreddit about it if you want to have fun with it. Uh, you know, I, I looked at Google Images. I don't know which one of those are fake. Uh, there's everything from there from like, like a camera. I think one of them is like a, a pregnancy test. I, I don't understand how, but that, you, know, you can run Doom on everything. And... One of the reasons you can is because the mean spec is, well, obviously, like, it's, it's made from 1993 hardware, right? So, like, you, you need a 386 CPU, uh, 486 if you want to be, like, spicy, uh, 4 megs of RAM, a VGA graphics card, and 24 megs of HD space. That's it. That's what you need, and you can run Doom. So, obviously, you can run it on just about anything, and that's the whole point. And you can even run it on your modern computer today. You can go on Steam and buy it for, like, 5 bucks. You may argue 5 bucks is a little much for, like, a game that is 30 years old at this point. And, you know, I'm not going to delve into it. No, I'm going to have something way more fun. I can talk about the absolute lunacy about buying this game on Epic Game Store. And, you know, you might say, oh, yeah, Matthew, of course it's lunacy. Why would you buy a game on Epic Game Store, especially if there is a version you can get on Steam for cheaper, right? Like, that is the definition of insanity. But that's not even my point. No. My point is, if you go there, and then you look at the mean spec, look at what you need. It's the same game. They say they have like mouse support and like slightly better graphics. I looked at all the screenshots, they look exactly the same. This is what you need to run it on the Epic Store if you buy it for like, what is it, like nine pounds or something? Oh, four pounds, I can't even numbers. Uh, so, wait, what? What the hell is going on here? Like, just for scale, right? This is, this, is, this is what the CPU they recommend, right? It has two physical cores, it runs at 2.66 gigahertz, six, me six megabytes of L2 cache, it's 64 bits, of course. You have like SSC 1234, uh, you have MMX, all that stuff. All that stuff that a 486 does not have. So just, you know, like to get some figures, to, to get exactly where we're going. So that's like, that's, that's what Dooms requires and that's what Epic Store Doom requires. Uh, we can look at RAM requirements. Uh, we, we also get like a, like four order of magnitude difference. Uh, we can look at like, like kind of like how many flops do you need on your, on your graphics card? Like, you know, you, you, get, you get some interesting numbers out of there, right? Uh, and like, what, what are we doing here? What's, what's going on? What, what the fuck? Um, so the problem is it's not an isolated case. Like, I mean, think about it. Look at whatever, you know, if anybody was using software in the 90s. Like, how much, how much did you need to run MS Word? And how much do you need today? Or Winamp? Or a browser? Or an IM? And, you know, you can start thinking about other oh, things, like install size, I.O. Why does my phone apps that are just messages, text messages, stop working when I run into 2 and 3Gs? How many fucking megabytes do you need to upload for, like, just making, like, an IM work? That should not be a problem, but it is, somehow. So what do we do about it? Well, well, first of all, we can go on the internet and make fun of Electron, like that's easy, I've done it, we've done it. Uh, but what can he actually do? Well, we can say that nah, it's induced demand, right? You know, that that's the problem, we just, we, we, we just induce demand. And I mean, that's true, I'm lazy, you're lazy, why would I bother, ship it, it works, fine, okay? But maybe we just need a better frame of reference. And I say that because I used to work in finance before I worked to the video game industry, and we said we had very serious clients with very serious like performance concerns, and we shipped in debug. And nobody cared about milliseconds, they cared about minutes. So my suggestion to you is get a good frame of reference, look at what other domains do, you might get surprised about their actual metrics, Stay humble and honest, because you will be humble when you start looking at their numbers compared to your numbers. And of course, educate other people when you actually figure out what is an actual good point of reference. And just real quick plug, if you like performance, I have a talk tomorrow about data-oriented design. Thank you.